Okay, I think we are ready to start. So thank you everyone for joining this morning. I just wanna make everyone aware that this is being recorded. If any members of the media would like a copy of today's recording, just please send me a message in the chat and I will make sure to send you a copy after we finish. Um, so I'm going to start by passing it off to Jerry Shingles, a residential survivor. She will also be joined by NDP MP for Winnipeg Center, Leah Gazan. Grand Chief Arlen Dumas, Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, Grand Chief Jerry Daniel, Southern Chiefs Organization, and Grand Chief Garrison Sati, Manitoba, Kuwait, Naui, Oki Mackinac. After they speak, we'll take questions from the media. Um, to ask you a question, please use your raise hand function or you can send me a message in the chat. Okay, over to you, Jerry. Good morning. I, I'm Jerry Shingus, a residential school survivor, and I, I welcome everybody. On May 28th, we received news of 215 children's remains were found in Kamloops Residential School, BC. This news had a direct impact on every survivor across Canada, residential school survivor. Our emotions were impacted. We were triggered. We old wounds opened up. Our nation woke up. I I say to me, which for all the all the support, outpouring support from everyone that came and that are going to BC and offering that support, but also. I will, my uh, statement, I guess, before we can reconcile, we need the truth to be acknowledged. What I experienced in residential school is an act of genocide. It is violent that the government's failure to acknowledge this fact leaves the experience of survivors up for debate. It's a tragic time. I want to know that uh, everybody's, uh, like the survivors of the sacred fire that uh, we held here in Winnipeg, they came with their stories. There's so many stories that are untold right now that need to be shared. Our survivors are uh, reaching out for support. But we, I ask that um, each one of you uh, bring that love forward to the survivors and their families. Because when we were in school, we never received that love. We received the uh, hate. We were, as a child, we, we were treated with hate. And no child should ever experience that. I say to me, which to our leadership here, that's here to offer our support. We need you. We need you to bring voice for survivors across Canada and within the province of Manitoba. I go this to me, which. Thank you so much. I'll now pass it over to NDP MP Leah Gazan. Um, I'd like to start out uh, by thanking Elder Shin Goose uh, for sharing uh, not only her experience, but her strength and, and wisdom um, and her leadership, uh, certainly uh, in the province of, of Manitoba and uh, around the country, bringing to light the genocide uh, that occurred in residential school. Um, and as uh, Elder Shin Goose um, mentioned, uh, there is no reconciliation without truth. And what happened in residential school is clearly, was clearly an act of genocide uh, with impacts that reverberate our family's uh, community uh, today. Uh, and with the uh, discovery of the 215 children at Kamloops to Swepmik, it's a sad reminder 
that many of the kids who went to these schools never returned home, leaving families and loved ones without closure, wondering where they were. There is no legal definition uh, in international law for cultural genocide. What happened in, at the residential schools was genocide full stop and clearly falls under Article 2 of the UN Convention on Genocide. It's time that this government acknowledges the truth that Canada and churches perpetrated genocide on Indigenous peoples, specifically children. If we are going to move forward, this truth needs to be told. And I think in honour of all the children who never returned home, in honour of all the mothers and fathers and families that were left to suffer in grief, we must end the debate about whether what happened in residential schools was genocide. That is violent. We must bring forward truth. So with that, um, I'll pass it along. And again, I just wanna thank all the leadership uh, in Manitoba, uh, including uh, Elder Grandma Shingus for raising this. It's time that this government honor the truth. Thank you so much, Leah. So we'll now pass it over to Grand Chief Dumas. Good morning, um, Grand Chief Dumas, Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Uh, firstly, on behalf of the Assembly, I want to extend my sincere condolences to the family and loved ones of the four citizens who were randomly murdered by a cowardly act of hate in London, Ontario. The AMC condemns all forms of hate against our Muslim brothers and sisters. And First Nations stand in solidarity with you in your struggle against racism in this country. I want to acknowledge my fellow Grand Chiefs. I also want to acknowledge uh, Grandma Shingus, Indian residential school survivors, and all other survivors who persevered over genocidal acts. And uh, your voice and your legacy will continue and provide justice in this country. And I also want to acknowledge and thank the Member of Parliament, Lee Gazan, for the invitation to provide a few words in support of our motion on behalf of the Assembly. The motion that the Member for Winnipeg Centre will be seeking will be for unanimous consent for the House tomorrow and speaks to the support and the long-held position of the Chiefs in Manitoba that the killing of First Nations and Indigenous people in Canada by the state amounts to genocide. I also want to call into um, reminder that over, over the years, we've found more and more evidence of the fact of systemic discrimination, systemic racism, uh, federal sponsored initiatives such as eugenics, such as nutritional experiments, such as uh, uh, removing children by gunpoint by uh, RCMP, and uh, all, of these, all of these initiatives were, were funded by the federal government to literally rip our children from our homes, from, from their culture and from their families. And uh, uh, it's, it's time that we address this issue uh, with truth, with honesty, so that we can move forward and provide the healing uh, that is much needed for all of us so that we can move together uh, in a path of healing so that we can bring strength uh, to one another. But we can't do that if we continue to acknowledge and belittle uh, the history and, and the reality of our, of our families and of our, our, our survivors. I'm a third generation survivor of residential school. I, I see today the impacts that this federal funded uh, sanctioned uh, uh, interference in, in, in my community and who I am as an individual has impacted generations. Uh, as well, the churches need to be, need to atone for their role. I'm very disappointed with the stance of the church for their silence and not wanting to move forward in a meaningful way. And uh, the, it's unfortunate uh, and it, it makes me uh, think about um, uh, the value of, of, of law and, and, and whose law is, is, is more important. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, these religious organizations and their, and their documents, 
uh, uh, tell us how we're to, to live together, the golden rule and things of that such. But it seems that the law of man seems to be more fearful and uh, distracts people from uh, speaking honestly about what had happened and the role that their institution played in the murder and killing of our children, of our babies. And, and it's unacceptable. And we need to move forward. And for this government, we now have an opportunity to correct uh, these historic injustices. And, for that, and, and further to that, they are not historic. The last residential school closed in 1996. My younger siblings attended residential school. Residential school is not a historic thing that happened hundreds of years ago. It happened just yesterday and it's happening today. Therefore, I stand in solidarity with our MP, Leah Gazan, who's going to bring forward this very important uh, uh, vote that, that I, uh, we, everyone will be watching and we will see how we move forward. I know that the Prime Minister is now acknowledging what had happened and, and has spoken to it in, in, uh, in Parliament and that uh, others need to do the same. Um, and it's very important that we, we stand united. I want to acknowledge all those people who actually stopped me on the street, people that normally uh, would not have any interaction with, and uh, they actually acknowledge what had happened. And, and many of them are, are shocked. Many of them are not First Nations people, and they are shocked w at the reality. And as somebody who had gone through uh, the educational institutions at the time when I did, and I, and I remember being guided away uh, from this conversation that genocide did not happen when nothing could be further from the truth. And I believe that those 215 uh, babies or children that were found in those unmarked, undocumented graves speak to the reality of what genocide was. You know, and I look forward to, to the progress that we're going to make because the conversation has started. It is being listened to by everyone around the country, uh, by, by everybody uh, around the world. And we will, we will continue to push and advocate so that we can bring forward all the necessary ingredients so we can have true reconciliation and acknowledgement of what had happened and quit blaming indigenous people for our reality when all this government sanctioned initiatives have tried so hard to uh, extinguish and eradicate the Indian problem in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will now pass it over to Grand Chief Daniels. Shingus for your for the prayer this morning and thank you uh, MP Leah Gazan uh, for your leadership on this. It's very important. I think that Parliament and the leaders of Canada come to terms with the reality and the truth. The boy win. Thank you, uh, Grand Chief Dumas, for your for your words and really articulating uh, a lot of uh, what has transpired. Uh, I'm happy to see uh, Grand Chief uh, Garrison Seti here as well, and I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, on behalf of the, the Southern Chiefs Organization, uh, we absolutely uh, support uh, you know the the establishment and and the complete uh, consensus that needs to be held uh, at, at at Parliament in Canada. Here. It's absolutely important that every single member of parliament understands the history and that we move away from denial. And, and that's what uh, we've seen. We've seen uh, uh, systematic uh, waves of denial in, in, in different forms. And it's undeniable uh, what had taken place. It was an act of genocide. And you can look through the definitions, the, the five, a, B, C, D, and E, when it comes to defining uh, what genocide is, as what was laid out at the, the Convention on the Prevention of Punishment and the Crime of Genocide. And it's absolutely uh, the truth. And it's important that the leadership in Canada acknowledge that, because the change cannot simply happen within the minds and the acts of leaders, it actually has to happen also within the minds and hearts of all Canadians. 
and all new Canadians. And that can't happen if the leadership doesn't unanimously reconcile themselves with the past and what had taken place. And also what is taking place throughout the last many decades and the government policies that continue to create the social economic condition of Indigenous peoples here today. And so it's absolutely integral for Canada, for not only Canadians, but also for the rest of the world that needs to understand that these sorts of acts are unacceptable for humanity. It's important that we lead through action and Canada needs to, needs to do these kinds of things. And so I, I, I have no less expectation that every single MP would endorse and support the complete recognition of genocide in all its definitions for Canada. That is what the residential school's intent was, to kill the Indian in the child, and really in this instance, kill 215 children, and undocument them, and hide them, and deny them from the history. And we have no doubt in our minds that we're going to continue to see evidence of this continued act throughout every single residential school that we can look at. And so it's absolutely important that we come to terms with that. And we encourage every single Canadian to do everything that they can to not only bring out the truth, but to change the narrative for Indigenous peoples and for all Canadians. And also we want to uh, give our condolences to the, to the Muslim community and the Islamics who, who lost their lives in London uh, just the other day. Uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with them as well. And uh, hopefully uh, all Canadians can come together uh, with a true era of reconciliation because we were stronger as, as uh, through our knowledge and our collective efforts and, and the love that we all share for, the, for our families and for our communities. And so that needs to be the future, but we must reconcile ourselves with the past. And that's why this motion, this, this, uh, this act being pushed forward by, by Leah Gazan is absolutely important for, for all, of the, all of the ancestors that have left us and all of those who are to come and all of the children, it's absolutely important for these sorts of acts to take place. So with that, I wanna thank everyone who's, who's been a part of today's press conference and for all those who are fighting to create the necessary change that will have a better future, create a better future for all of us. Miigwech. Thank you. And finally, we're gonna pass it over to Grand Chief uh, Sati. It's my honor to be here this morning and I want to acknowledge the Member of Parliament for allowing us to be part of this conversation, a very important conversation, conversation that needs to be had. And uh, I also acknowledge my colleagues, the Grand Chief of AMC and the Grand Chief of SCO for their support, because I think this is one of those issues where we need to stand together to ensure that uh, justice is served on behalf of the 215. And I want to thank my colleagues for acknowledging the loss of the Muslim family, uh, a, a great atrocity, a great tragedy nationwide. And uh, we just want to offer our prayers for the families and uh, the remaining uh, child from that family is uh, totally uh, unacceptable. It just goes to show what kind of attitudes exist in this country and have existed for a long time. I've always said that there can be no reconciliation without truth. We've talked about truth and reconciliation, but now we're talking about a truth that uh, the nation has denied and uh, have not accepted. But now it's, it's time to say that this act that was committed on our people is an act of genocide. We can no longer deny it. We cannot sidestep it because if we are to heal as a nation, we have to admit that this is an act of genocide. And the Manitoba Kuwaitnu Ogimagana supports the motion of Winnipeg Central Member Parliament Leah Gazan in calling for the unanimous agreement of the members of the House of Commons that the former Indian residential school system is an act of genocide, genocide sorry. as it is defined in Article 2 of the United Nations Convention on the Prevention and the Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, 
and also in Article 6 of the Roman Statute that established the International Criminal Court. There is no way around it. We must admit that this is an act of genocide and we're calling on the members of parliament to address it and call it for what it is and to support this motion. Recently, I wrote to the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and to the Minister of Justice, uh, Attorney General David Lametti to request that the Attorney, Attorney General immediately commence an investigation with the objective of determining the basis for prosecution under the Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act. We need to ensure that any additional burials at former Indian residential schools and any investigations of the circumstances must not be conducted by the RCMP as the RCMP were an integral part of the Indian residential school system. The Minister of Public Safety acknowledged the central role of the RCMP in his comments to the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs last week. So MKO is calling for any searches and any found burial sites to be under the control and guidance of our elders and knowledge keepers and to be protected in accordance to the customary laws and practices of each First Nation. We are calling for an investigation of these sites to be carried out by an Indigenous police service that is selected by the affected First Nations. MKO is calling on the provincial ministers of justice to work with all the First Nations in each province to ensure that any site that is designated as a crime scene is placed under the control of investigating in Indigenous police services. So we're also asking for agreements between First Nations and the federal and provincial governments to ensure that all of the remains of our children are repatriated to their home communities according to the wishes of their families and their communities. And we're calling for legislation, new legislation similar to the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act in the United States to ensure that our people are protected and that they are in control and that the repatriation of the remains of our children and all First Nation remains, wherever they are found, are located. So that I'm thankful that we're able to join together to address this very important matter this morning. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Someone let me know that there might be an issue with sound. If anyone else is having issue hearing, could you please let me know so I can try to sort that out. Um, we will now um, open up to questions from the media. If you have a question, could you please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen? You can also send me a private message in the chat. Um, just as a reminder, you will get one question and one follow up. Okay, so the first question is going to go to Dylan Robertson. Dylan, can you just um, state the name of your publication, please? Yeah, sure. It's uh, Dylan Robertson from the Winnipeg Free Press. Uh, thanks so much, uh, everyone, for taking our questions today. It's an important topic. Um, for each of the, the Grand Chiefs, I was just wondering if you could please explain what contact you've had with the provincial government ever since the Kamloops um, revelation came to light. Uh, I might start with Grand Chief Dumas and then just go to the two regional Grand Chiefs. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, we, we reached out uh, the uh, our, our chairs of our Women's Council at the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs have, have asked for a meeting with the, our, our provincial uh, colleagues, but unfortunately we haven't been able to coordinate that coordinate that meeting. Um, I'm, I'm quite uh, disappointed with the, uh, with the steps that this provincial government has taken on this issue. Uh, it's unfortunate that they, they have not made every effort to try and facilitate and participate in conversations that we need to have uh, uh, within our province with our, with our provincial counterparts. And uh, I think it sort of speaks uh, truth to the issue of uh, the disconnect that exists between, you know, these, these um, institutions and, and how they are incapable of, of working with us in a meaningful way. Uh, it's unfortunate because I know that uh, uh, almost all of these individuals on a provincial level um, have my cell phone number. They're more than free to text me, but no one has made an effort to do so. So uh, it's quite disappointing. Uh, unfortunately, not surprising, but very disappointing.
Grand Chief uh, Seti and I actually had met with uh, Minister Squires, I think, just shortly after, and also uh, Eileen Clark, uh, shortly after we were aware of uh, uh, what had taken place. Our, our, our conversation was uh, mainly around uh, child welfare and some of the work uh, with the Leadership Council and creating the terms of reference and trying to sort out how we could uh, work with the province on, on, on that specific uh, item. Um, they did uh, share obviously their their condolences uh, in terms of their actions and uh, recognition of uh, genocide that has not been shared with us and i don't think that uh, we've heard much more uh, than that uh, from the provincial government uh, we also uh, we also received uh, some correspondence from uh, minister clark at mko and also minister gordon also uh, verbally sent her condolences. So uh, the conversation that we had with Minister Squires, but also uh, in conversation uh, talking about uh, the potential ramifications of what has really happened and how we can need to move forward. But uh, this is just the beginning of conversation. We need to continue to talk. That's Good stuff. And uh, my follow up, uh, I'm not trying to distract from the, the genocide designation. I just, I didn't have a lot of questions. So my, my follow up is about the Catholic Church and the records. Um, we know, know that there's been withheld records in some provinces. It doesn't issue in all provinces, according to the scholars. Uh, some of the chiefs who have a, a Catholic residential school in their community uh, they weren't sure if that was an issue. I was just wondering if the, the grand chiefs or Premishingus or MP, you know, Gazan, if any of you have heard about specific schools in Manitoba where the Catholic Church is not providing the records? Uh, thank, thank you so, so much for your, your question, uh, Dylan. I think it's important to note, I mean, we're finding, um, uh, you know, finding out uh, as this goes along, uh, former uh, Senator Murray Sinclair has indicated there could be as many as 25,000 uh, children who have gone uh, missing. I think, I think the point here is that the TRC was very clear in their calls uh, to action, including uh, calls to action 58. Uh, in relation to uh, the Catholic Church, it's, it's time that um, these call, they heed these calls to action. Uh, hand over uh, records has been requested uh, by Prime Minister Trudeau um, and, uh, you know, apologize uh, for the harms uh, that occurred in residential schools, uh, including Catholic residential schools, and noting that 70% of residential schools in this country were under, um, under uh, the authority of the Catholic Church, it's time for us to move forward. Thank you, Dylan. So the next question is going to Chris Reynolds of the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, folks. Thanks very much for your time uh, and your words. Um, a question first for you, um, Ms. Gazan, and anyone else is, of course, welcome to, to chime in as well. I, I was wondering if, um, on the question of the definition of genocide, if you've looked abroad to other countries um, to see where colonial treatment of indigenous peoples that amounts to genocide has provided some kind of, I don't know if blueprint is the right word, but has offered an example as to, to reinforce your, your case all the more, though it may well not need reinforcement. Um, I think the um, UN uh, definition uh, under the UN Convention on Genocide, Article 2, is very clear. Uh, and if you read Article 2, uh, as Grand Chief Daniels noted, A to E, what occurred in residential schools meets all uh, criteria, including uh, E, which, in, which states forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Uh, in order to qualify as genocide, you only have to meet one of the criteria under the definition. Uh, residential schools meet all the criteria under the definition. So I think it's important for Canada to take note 
uh, and do the right thing uh, and speak truth to what happened uh, at, uh, at residential schools, which is genocide. If I, if I may, I, I sort of wanted to add to that and, and, and touch up on, on the last question uh, as well. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the, the, the church back home, which is a Roman Catholic church, is very well documented. Uh, they had a, a, a litany of history that, that, that they had documented. So we know that the information is there. We know that the department itself uh, would have access to a lot of, a lot of significant information. But uh, to, to uh, Mr. Reynolds' question, uh, the onus shouldn't be on First Nations to justify their position. And I believe that that's always uh, the, the issue. It's contentious. You know, I think today is the opportunity for everyone to take the higher road and be honest and open and, and, and bring forward the truth. You know, as in my statements before, there's government sanctioned eugenics. There was TB experiments that were government funded. There, you know, children are ripped from their homes by the RCMP, you know, and then further to that, children were ripped from their homes under the auspices of the, of the churches who played a, a, a meaningful and tangible role on the removal of those children. All those schools that were funded weren't doing them out of charity. They had received funding from the federal government to actually uh, take children away from their homes. So uh, I would, I'd rather turn your question around to the federal government and, and uh, be truthful and honest and, and actually show uh, the many, many attempts over the course of history, right up until uh, uh, today, uh, all these government sanctioned uh, experiments that were conducted uh, on our people, on First Nations people in these institutions, in our communities, nutritional experiments. You call it, you know, they're all being, they're all being uncovered. You know, these are all government sanctioned uh, initiatives that have happened to our communities and, and, uh, and they, and they, and they need to be, they need to be addressed. They need to be dealt with. So I just wanted to add that to your, your question. Thank you. Uh, just as a follow up, Ms. Gazan, have you received uh, any positive indications or any indications whatsoever from, from any of the other parties? On your motion. Well, I was really disappointed that uh, the Liberal uh, uh, government, uh, including the Prime Minister, um, didn't show up for the vote on the NDP opposition uh, day motion. I have asked several questions uh, in the in the House, um, you know, citing the the UN definition on the Convention of Genocide, without acknowledgement from the Liberal government. I think, you know, Canadians, uh, you know, more and more uh, want reconciliation uh, in this country. Uh, they are ready to move forward uh, in truth. And I'm hoping that the federal government uh, certainly does the right things as all parliamentarians uh, across all party lines does the right thing and uh, unanimously supports my motion uh, to affirm that what happened in, in residential schools is in fact an act of genocide. Thank you, Chris. Um, so we have time for a few more questions. So I'll invite members of the media again to use the raise hand function or send me a message in the chat if you'd like to ask a question. Okay, I'm not seeing any more raised hands. So that will bring a close to today's press conference. Thank you so much to everyone for speaking. Um, thank you for all the members of the media for joining today. Um, if you would like a recording of today's press conference, please send me an email. There will also be a press release going out shortly. Thank you.